This is now the most accurate replica of a Mark IV tank ever built. It was great to see it all painted up with the roof on, all the hatches, exhaust, great. And she's been given the crew number and name of the battered original guy saw here on his first visit to Cambrai five months ago. Deborah's still here, isn't she? The original Deborah, so we've got Deborah too. We've named her Deborah too. I think that's quite appropriate. Very fitting. The plan is to now drive Deborah Two across the battlefield. Then, at the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month, to stop and observe a minute's silence. Guy's brought together all those who've helped him over the last five months. And for some, today's the first time they've seen his tank. Nice to meet you, Tom. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> nice to meet you. You've done some work. <laughs> you, too. From Germany, Torsten Brand, whose computer design made this whole project possible. And he was four years drawing up all the little components. It's just an amazing job. You've done an amazing job. Yeah. And, and now it wasn't for nothing. It's really awesome. You're happy. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It was an honor. From the Royal Tank Regiment, Lieutenant Matt Winters. It's, yeah, it's astonishing looking at it, and, and that's what, you know, that's what our predecessors went to war in. Wow, uh, 100 years ago. I, yeah. From Cambrai, Philippe Gorczynski. Wow. That is my favorite name for a tank. <laughs> she make a nice homage to the number one. Amazing. And from the family of Deborah's original commander, Tim Heap. 100 years ago, my grandfather would have been somewhere around here preparing Deborah to go over there and eat the secret. I think the, the front of the tank, it's, it's really beautifully done. And there's just over 3,000 rivets, and there's not one rivet doing a job. They're just there for, for the look. Yeah, I, I know, but, but it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the yeah. colour is superb. Every detail is, it seems to be there, yeah. so it's, I am really yeah. impressed. It's yeah. absolutely perfect. Yeah. And also one thing which you cannot notice with the camera is the smell, the smell of the mechanics. And I say, wow, we are here. I can't wait to ride in it. That is um, incredible. Guy will drive Deborah Two north from just outside the small village of Bocom. I think that there was not a better place, the more symbolic position to uh, launch the your attack, it's a friendly attack. So all the sites which mean something for the first day of the battle were there. From here, Colonel Hugh Ellis, commanding officer of the Tank Corps, directed the attack from his tank called Hilda, named after a favorite aunt. At the very center of the line, as part of H Battalion, Ellis personally led the whole corps into battle. A hundred years later, it's time for Guy's crew to recreate a small part of that advance. Stephen and I, up the front, doing the driving, Chris, the first bloke we met at JCB, doing the gears. Matt, yeah, he took me out in the, in the Challenger too. Master man, master man, no better man to point us in the right direction with a bit of tank aiming. Young Tom from JCB, and with a Torsten in there as well. Justin, chased it. Then Tim and his granddad was in Deborah. Right, we're all ready, guys. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and he fires up, there's some power there. Right, you ready? I want anything to break, because I knew what the consequences would be if it did break. engine revving going on. Very mechanical in there. I like it. And as you're going forward, it's OK until you steer a little bit and then you can hear the, the chain slack and boom, bang. If it had broke down there, it would have struggled getting in. You know, when we were really talking about this, like even Stephen wasn't talking about this. I said, what, you know, what if that goes wrong? And he said, well, we'll, we'll worry about that if it comes. Don't mention it. Years ago, the amount of adrenaline that must have been going through you because you'd have been the first thing that the enemy would see, they'd be shooting at you, aiming at you. Just to see the, the tank 
just on the top of the ridge like that, it looks fantastic. And to think of the 375 in a line, six kilometers long, would just be unbelievable. For me, it's uh, uh, very emotional. With her journey over, friends, families and locals get to see Deborah too up close. To do this in such a short space of time with, with such a great team of people, yeah, it's really special. From nothing to, to that in, in five months is amazing, absolutely amazing. The effort everyone's put in with the enthusiasm is it's just been phenomenal and uh, yeah, and I think everyone's had great fun doing it. It's all happened, you just think, oh yeah, they're the right people, they know how. It's all come together, it's bloody great. I looked across the battlefield and I had the view of where Grandfather was. And I, of course, I closed my eyes and thought about him very, very much. To remember the people who did make the ultimate sacrifice a hundred years ago, it's the, it's the right thing to do. Something I'll never forget. Something's going to live with me forever. We did the minute silence, very fitting. Time to think. From Cambrai, now it's going to the Norfolk Tank Museum. And what we in November, I think they open up in about April time, or they open up to the public. You've got to go see it. You've got to go see it. Yeah, you see it with your own eyes. It's all right seeing it on television, seeing pictures of it. You know, you've got to see it with your own eyes. They're pleased with it. A tribute to the tank and an honour to do it on Remembrance Day.